Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Today is July 3rd. It is Friday. I got Reagan here with me with her little hamster, Chunky, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so July 3rd, this devotional is very important. So please listen, please tune in, and really make it a point to soak in this information and apply it to your daily life. So the devotional says, my children make a pastime of judging one another and themselves, but I am the only capable judge. I have acquitted you through my own blood. Your acquittal came at the price of my unparalleled sacrifice. That is why I am highly offended when I hear my children judge one another or indulge in self-hatred. If you live close to me and absorb my word, the Holy Spirit will guide and correct you as needed. There is no condemnation for those who belong to me. And the scriptures, there's four of them. Luke 6, 37 says, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. 2 Timothy 4, 8 says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Titus 3, 5 says, he saved us not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And Romans 8, 1 says, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, so let's go all the way back to the beginning. Um, God clearly is the only capable judge. It says that he acquitted us already through his own blood, through the sacrifice of Jesus. Acquitted means that you're freed or you're charged not guilty to something that you have been accused of. So even though you may have already heard acquitted or know that that means like, oh, you don't have to deal with something, I, I think it's important for you to know the definitions of these words. So that way when you hear them in the rest of the Bible, which they're mentioned frequently, um, you'll know what they mean for their real meaning and not just of an ass assumption. <clears throat> um, so in this devotional, again, it says to let the Holy Spirit guide and correct you. Letting the Holy Spirit guide you is something that we should do on a daily basis. It's probably something that's going to be mentioned every single day in the devotional at least a few times a week. Um, so I can't stress it enough to listen to that small voice in your head when when um, you're doing something or going somewhere and and you hear something, oh, you probably shouldn't take that route. Why don't you go ahead and take the uh, the back way instead? Do that because it's it's the Holy Spirit guiding you and helping you learn how to take different routes to things because there might be an obstacle you would, fa you would face if you would have taken your original route. Same thing goes with um, if you're thinking about bashing someone or bad talking someone and the Holy Spirit's like, you know what, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe you shouldn't do that. That's God telling you the whole through the Holy Spirit to just calm down, save yourself from sinning because you could be saying some really bad things and it'll come back to you in the end. So there's no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. Condemnation means that you, condem to, to condemn someone is to sentence someone to a particular punishment, but especially death is linked to condemnation. So for God to tell us that you know, there's no condemnation for us because Jesus died for us and we're his children. I think that's awesome. Um, and then in 2 Timothy 4, I kind of lingered in this, you know, first half of this chapter, not just verse 8. Um, so specifically in verse 8, though, it says that all will be crowned who are longing for God's appearing. Longing is an intense yearning or a desire or hope for God to come back. So, yes, people are they're going to be picking and choosing of people, but it's of people who are seriously yearning for God, who are like, oh my God, I can't wait. They're spending all their time with him. They're praying. They're, you know, not letting things get in the way of God or, um, you know, take his spot in their life. He should always be number one. So I went ahead and I, I pulled up 2 Timothy 4 because I want to read verse 1 through 8 to you guys because we already touched on verse 8. Excuse me. I have hiccups. <clears throat> so 
2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8 says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They'll follow their own desires and will look for teachers who tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. So when I read this, I was like, ooh. Because even though I already know all these things, it's like every time you read the scriptures in the in the Bible, they they have like a different connection with you for this particular day in your life, in this year, in this month. And um, for, the, for this to be in the Bible telling you that people are going to specifically look for those who are going to tell them what they want to hear. Because um, you know how people gossip or they ask their friends for advice and they'll have the one friend who will really tell them the right thing to do. And then they're like, oh, I just feel like I need more opinions. And then they go and ask other people and they'll cling to those who say what they want to hear. And then it makes them feel better about what they're doing. Hey, it makes them feel better about what they're doing because they're like, oh, okay. Like five people told me that I'm right, you know, and completely ignore the one person that they know is right. And they feel the connection with like, like that voice saying, yeah, you should probably listen to them. Excuse me. And not those other people because you're really going to get yourself into a whole mess of trouble. What are you doing? Pick her up. Um, sure. Um, she better not poop on me. Um, so they'll reject the truth and chase after myths. Uh, you know that there is a huge group of people who strongly believe in superstitions and myths and doing things with, you know, onions or burning herbs or or doing certain things and they feel like these will ward off spirits or if you have this in your room it's kind of like you know garlic and vampires or or mirrors you know and just weird things that they they believe in and they they really think that these objects will help them in certain situations and i think it's silly to rely on an onion or garlic or um burning of whatever it is and i don't mean to offend anybody but God is really the only one who can help you. I do believe in using anointing oil in certain situations um, to bless and anoint your home or yourself or your children. But when you take it too far and you start to rely on those items and you start to idolize those items and think that it's the oil itself and not that it's linked to God helping you through the oil, that's where I know that there's an issue. Um <clears throat> Because then you, you start to get very reliant on, excuse me, <clears throat> protecting the little vial of oil or making sure that no one goes near it. But really, you should be that way toward God and making sure that um, people know that his value is important and that he's the only one making the oil work or, or having it be anointed. Um, so those are the things that I wanted to tell you guys. Um, I had recorded July 1st, okay? I had a really rough day on July 1st, and if you guys don't mind sticking around, I know I'm already kind of almost at 10 minutes, um, I wanted to read the devotional for July 1st because it's specifically why I wasn't able to post it is what the devotional was saying to look out for. So if I could really quickly read this, um, it says, I am the life and light in abundance. As you spend time soaking in my presence, you are energized, enlightened, through communing with me, you transfer your heavy burdens to my strong shoulders. By gazing at me, you gain my perspective on your life. This time alone with me is essential for unscrambling your thoughts and smoothing out the day before you. 
Be willing to fight for this precious time with me. Opposition comes in many forms. Your own desire to linger in bed, the evil one's determination to distract you from me, the pressure of family, friends, and your own inner critic to spend time, your time more productively. As you grow in your desire, sorry, I'm reading it too. As you grow in your desire to please me above all else, you gain strength to resist these opponents. Delight yourself in me, for I am the deepest desire of your heart. I hear your tongue <laughs> when you're reading. And um, Psalms 48, 9 says, Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Deuteronomy 33, 12 says, About Benjamin, he said, Let the beloved of the Lord <clears throat> rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. <laughs> Psalms 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Um, the things that I had mentioned on July 1st um, was that in Deuteronomy 33, 12, where it says that the ones the Lord love, I need a baby wipe. Okay. Go get it. Okay. Rest between your shoulders. I had automatically imagined um, a child sitting on their parents' shoulders and just seeing how clearly you could see everything out ahead of you and in front of you because your father is guiding you or your parent is guiding you. And you just feel so much more at peace and at rest knowing that, hey, I don't have to worry about scurrying around people or having to worry about trees or buildings or whatever get in my way. I, my, my father will guide me. And I, <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. And um, delighting himself yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Ask and you shall receive. I I believe in that very strongly. Uh -huh. It's not funny, Rayanne. It's, it's gross. You're being dramatic. That's I'm not being dramatic. <laughs> Nobody sure wants to be well. freaking pooped on. Nobody wants to, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh my god. Oh, we still might hear you. Shut up. <laughs> no, that's not funny. Here. She doesn't poop on me like that. Yes, she does. I saw it the other day. It's gross. That was Take like this she and I'm going to change times in like a, a second. Um, <clears throat> love all God's creatures. <laughs> kind of. I don't like roaches. I like rodents. I love them. Roaches, I said. Oh, roaches. Anyways, yeah. this isn't what this, this is about. So, again, I'm getting distracted. So, July 1st is about don't let distractions get in your way. So, I did record this devotional, but my God, my kids were crazy that day. They were screaming, tantrums, fighting. Everything was getting in the way, and I wasn't able to post it. So I'm like, you know what, devil, you're not going to stop me from posting this devotional. So I'm going to say it right now and add it to my July 3rd. I am uh, making it very important for me to have to actually post every single day of this month, um, specifically because it's my birthday month, and I have a lot of things that I'm asking for in prayer. And I hope and pray that you guys will join me in this and pray for me and my family and just be in agreement with um, the things that I'm asking for prayer with, with like um, guiding my children and helping them to get along better or helping me or letting me see my, fi my future, um, helping me with my finances. Um, these are all things that I am relying on God for, but I would really appreciate if you guys pray for as well. So you have a wonderful day today. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend and look forward to tomorrow's devotional. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, everything that you can do to help my following increase and everyone can uh, hear this good news that the Bible is telling me to share with you. You want to say anything? No? Okay, so just say have a good day then. Have a good day.